The Ten Commandments of High Handicap Golf are brought to you by Swing Tweaks. Believe it or not, there are only four components of golf. There are full swings, there are partial swings, there's putting, and perhaps most important, there's the part that takes place between the ears. The Ten Commandments of High Handicap Golf will cover all of these, starting with between the ears. The first commandment of High Handicap Golf is to check your ego, beginning with your decision of which tees to play. A good rule of thumb is that you want to be able to reach greens and regulation on par fours with your best drive and your best seven iron. For me, those numbers total 390 yards, so the blue tees here at the Mission Hills Pete Dye Challenge course are appropriate, where the average par four measures 373 yards. Okay, so very early, very cold. 111 to touch into and take extra clubs so I don't have to think about swinging hard. Pins in the middle of the green, so I'll aim in the middle of the green. Checking your ego also means being realistic with club selection. My 9-iron carries 125 yards, Thanks. but not on my first swing of the day in 40-degree weather. And here, the golf gods reward me for checking my ego with a birdie. Thanks. So, stroke hole one. I can see why, but let's just get one in play, and then this becomes not as scary. Pick a target, try to think cut. The second commandment, this time covering the full swing, is get the ball in play. Lately, I've been hitting a cut with driver so I know that with my shape, I'll get the ball in play. But if your driver dispersion brings trouble into play, don't be afraid to hit a different club off the tee. You might sacrifice some yards, but you'll avoid losing strokes to penalties. So one, four, seven, taking extra club because the pin's at the front. Once again, we're checking the ego here. And with a stress-free swing, I hit this past the pin and accomplish the goal of having a putter in hand for the next shot. Uphill coming through here. And it's not doing a whole lot, so nice 60 footer that's all about pace. And that leads to the first putting commandment focus on speed. It's far more important to understand whether your 60 foot lag putts are uphill or downhill Thanks. than it is to become hyper focused on a line. Walk the putt, program in the speed, and you'll find yourself two putting much more often. Center left, pretty good stroke on it. So 205. Definitely want to miss to the right. I think the swing thoughts here are going to be smooth tempo, miss right. Back to a full swing commandment. Play away from the trouble. There's nothing wrong with eyeing a spot to the right of this green. Okay. I'm lining up this birdie putt from just off the green here, and just like the last one, it's mostly about pace. Yeah, it did. But this time, yeah. the pace is a bit off. So just outside the hole. That was not a good putt. And it leads to a bogey. Okay, short little par five. Gonna commit to still trying to feel like every swing is a cut. So I'm going to aim kind of at the left edge here. But sometimes our plans go awry. Uh-oh. Like this drive that finds the water. That's the opposite of a good kick. Okay, put that one behind us. And that leads to the next commandment. Manage expectations. We need to put bad shots behind us and give our full attention to the next one. Let's just clip this often a miss I have with my first wedge of the day. I basically thin it. So I like to do a little practice swing where I feel bruising the ground. Mission accomplished. And despite the bad shot we hit off the tee, we'll have a look at par here. I think that's, oh, that's good, yeah. Just hit a straight putt at him. Straight four-footer. The golf gods reward us, and we make the par. Thanks. This is the most important full swing commandment. Take dead aim, or as Tiger liked to say, play aggressively at conservative targets. Okay, bushy tree on the left, think cut. Our target is never the fairway, or even the left side of the fairway. Our target should be as small as possible. In this case, I'm aiming smack at the middle of the bushy tree on the left side of the fairway. My driver is now missing in both directions, but missing on either side of this target should be just fine. We're still managing expectations too. It's a 400 plus yard par four, and par would be a steal here. Okay, 160, pins at the front, ball a bit below my feet, quite a bit below my feet actually. Stay down on it. Okay, thin wipey fade, cool. Like I said, we're still managing expectations. A little feely one. It's going to kick it hard left. So I need to aim a bit outside that ball that's near the pin there. Try to land it just at the front there. This is a miss, and we'll talk about it more later. Okay, so that was really, really bad. So at the hole this way, the beginning of the putt the other way. Okay, so all speed, because the last six feet are massively downhill. And just like all of our lag putts today, we're primarily focused on speed on this slick putt. In fact, I try to visualize every downhill putt rolling into Thanks. the hole at die speed. Thanks. This one is judged pretty well, and I'm not upset at all to tap this one in for bogey. 
So 158 here, you like playing it a bit longer, so I'm hitting a 165 club and aiming a bit left of the flag. Oh man. And once again, not every shot is going to go according to plan. Pin's about three paces on, maybe not even, but there's a big slope behind the pin. So if I do this the way I want to, I'm just gonna like throw it up 30 feet past the hole and then ride the slope back down. And all of this talk relates to the next partial swing commandment. Get it on the green. In some instances, an A plus result is just ensuring that you have a putter in hand for the next shot. I'm not going for the volatile flopper here. I'm taking what the course is giving me. Oh yeah, it needed to be way more right, but that's okay. So I've got this one a good like three, four feet left of the hole. A 20 footer left here isn't the worst result. We lag it up pretty close and we'll knock it in for another bogey. On to another long par four. And despite hitting a good drive, we're going to get into quite a bit yeah. of trouble on this hole. 204, I would usually be trying to run one up with my hybrid that goes 200, but Gordon coach says hit the 220 club. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh, that was interesting. It's wet for sure. Oh, maybe not. This one is wet, and the penalty stroke means that we don't have much wiggle room to get away with flubbing a chip, like we do here. Do that again. And seemingly out of nowhere, we're going to find a big number here. Yeah. We'll have to accept the rub of the course. And it was like into grain too. Yeah, yeah. So it's just moving a hair left. Got to decide if I'm giving up the hole. I don't think I am. Just right edge. Hit my line, hopefully. I'm still treating every shot with respect. Although when trying to take the break out of this one, I ultimately ram it quite a bit past the hole, where I'll still have work. But I do manage to knock this one in for a triple bogey seven. It's a good triple. <laughs> but what matters now is how we recover on the next hole. Aimed at that bunker and just think big high cut. And then it draws, but that's cool too. And the analysis over the next shot leads to the next commandment. So we've got a little downhill left to right lie here. It's slightly downhill, so you're essentially taking your club and strengthening a little bit effectively. Yep. You gotta take that into account. It's not just where's the green relative to this, it's, it's what lie you're on. And the commandment is that we assess each and every lie. So we've got a front pin that's uphill. And it's 101 stick. Okay. And obviously we don't wanna miss short. My okay. gap wedge, like, I only carry it 100 with a full swing, mm -hmm. and I don't love taking a full swing with it. Mm -hmm. And then pitching wedge carries like 110, 115. This is tricky. Shooting over and then having um, like a, not a short-sided chip, but chip with some room sounds great. So um, a couple yards left because it's it's front kind of right of the green. There's some room. Okay. Two yards. Yeah. So I'm hitting that the pitching wedge carry 110 club and backing off just like a hair hair. And then how are you backing off? What's the thing you're doing? Are you saying to yourself slower hands? Because that could be a problem unless you're tiger. True. Let's not do that. Choke down half an inch. Yeah, I like feet that. Closer together. Choke down. Feet a little closer together. I like that. And then still hit it. Yes. Yeah, and now take a golf swing. Yeah. Bingo. I think we should uh, <laughs> We should talk more. I am not a scratch to her. I actually think it evens out so middle of the hole. It's downhill, it's pretty scary. And despite another slick one here, we have to obey the most important putting commandment. Commit to a line. There's no second guessing it once I'm over it. Thanks. All right, Gordon, so left edge of the water and just think big high cut. Yeah, palm trees, okay. We're still committing to lines here and letting the chips fall as they may, which in this case, unfortunately means right into a bunker. That's a shame. This is like a tiny bit of a concern. Mm -hmm. And my miss out of bunkers tends to be chunky, but I'm on an uphill lie, but I still think having a bit more loft will hope, like I just don't want to chunk this out 60 yards. You got a little sand behind the ball Yeah, here. I saw Obviously that. we can't do much about that. Yeah. In my head, it's like hit a seven iron 150 yards and have 140 in kind of deal. Yep. Kind of came out like a wedge, but that's okay. Okay, 187 flag, big green up there, four hybrid, just Try to pick a good line and put good tempo. Let's do that. Looking at the middle of the green, not looking at the flag stick. I like the game plan here, and this one will get pin high. Just pushed it. Where I'll have a good look at getting up and down. But the putt from the fringe here is a bit pacey. Uh-oh. Chill. And I'll have three or four feet left. It's not meant to be, and we'll close the nine with a bogey. We've already covered nine of the Ten Commandments. And despite some volatility in the scoring on the front nine, I've mostly been happy with the process. We'll cover the 10th commandment on the next hole, 
and for the rest of the round, we'll evaluate the degree to which I obeyed all ten commandments. We start the back nine with another high cut off the tee. Thanks. And even though this one doesn't go far, it is in play. 213 stick. Okay. The wood, if I hit it well, is 220. Yeah. But I kind of want to just hit my 200 club. Okay, yeah. It's a long way home, and this approach will leave me chipping pin high. Thanks. Where we can talk about the 10th commandment. The 10th commandment pertains to partial swings greenside, where every high handicapper should have a stock shot. I like to get the ball rolling as quickly as possible using my 48 degree gap wedge. It might not look pretty, but I have a good feel for distance control with these, and many of my pitches wind up in makeable range. I watch Gordon miss his a bit low, and I knock mine in for par. Those are the 10 commandments, and you may have noticed that not a single one of them pertain to swing mechanics. And if I could add a bonus commandment, it would be this. Don't take swing advice from your playing partners. Far too often, I see well-intentioned golfers trying to instruct their playing partners. You should get swing instruction from a professional. And that's why I've partnered with Swing Tweaks. Swing Tweaks makes golf instruction easy, affordable, and most importantly, hassle-free. It's as simple as submitting a video of your swing in their app and receiving same-day instruction from a professional. Best of all, they're offering an awesome discount to viewers of the channel who use the code SCRATCH at sign up. Swing Tweaks is the best place to get help with your swing. Download the app and sign up today. And now back to the golf. A little too checky, maybe. I missed this green short, and chipping uphill into the green, I also leave the chip short. Add in a pulled putt, and we're forced to card a bogey. I'm trying to pick a target, but I think I got it. What I don't want to do is aim over like the left edge of the water and then accidentally draw it. So I'm aiming at like that crooked tree. I'm still choosing strategic targets where even my misses are able to stay in play. Left side of the green. Cool. Another smart target here where the golf gods help out my miss. Great kick. And I'm left with one of the few uphillers for birdie that I have all day. But it's not meant to be, and I'll take the par. On to the 14th hole. That was different. Where I hit a good drive and then fail to follow my own commandments. I used to do it with my Titleist one pretty well. Okay. But usually when I try it with this one, it's bad. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Yeah, it, it's like not it's the smartest shot for the situation, but it's cool that you get to try this right now. Yeah, and if it like messes up and it goes 150 yards, like whatever. Mm -hmm. I actually don't like it. Okay. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. I had that feeling. It was like, oh, you look really far away and it doesn't look like it'll work out very well. Par fives, why did I do this to myself? That was stupid. And now I have a tough lie and a longer approach than was necessary. And it gives me a chance to get back to my own playbook with this chip. It's in a terrible spot, and my only goal here is to get this one on the green. I managed to do it, and now it's a long, long look at par. And lo and behold, I run it well past the hole. Whoa, whoa, that really kept going. But I do a good job rolling the comebacker end over end and make the bogey. On to the oh. home stretch where unfortunately, I don't quite get all of this one. Yeah, I think it might be. This only carries one, four, five, but I still like it. It just looks good. Tell me what happened after. This one is also a bit wipey, and it too gets an unfortunate result here. Did it come down? Oh, brutal. Ready to record a bad shot? And I mentioned earlier that sometimes you get bitten by the rub of the course. Yep. I blade this one from a downhill lie right over the back. But what's important here is that I reset over this chip. I take my time visualizing how this one will roll out, and I'm not thinking about how the ball got here. I hit a checky one into the upslope, and it rolls out pretty close. I think it's just right edge. Don't give up the hole, Adam. Don't give up the hole. Now I commit to a line, and I do salvage the five. Okay, this one's going to be good. A good swing thought leads to a good swing. It's one of my best of the day, and now I'll rely on my host, Juno, for some course knowledge. Left of which on the hill? Yeah. So the Palo Verde tree, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like somewhere right in there, if you can fly it up there, that's going to be good. It'll bound, it'll go down. Cool, if okay. Any... Juno might have given me credit for having a bit more in my five wood, and I wind up in a pretty tough spot. Everything's going to get thrown left. True. I'll try to aim a little more at the pin. Just don't miss right. It's another one where I have to level set my expectations. It's tough to get close to this pin. That was like the best I was going to do, I think. Got it about a cup. Nonetheless, I have a look at birdie here, and I'm committed to my line. Oh. It slides a bit past, and I'll settle for par. Bad shot alert, but look at Coach Gordon finding the silver lining. Dry. And now I get to hit 
Nice dock chip. I'm bumping it into like the upslope with a gap wedge. This is usually one of the better shots in my arsenal, but this is a pretty feely one to a front pin, and I don't quite put enough on it. The par putt also has some movement on it, and I'm forced to card one more bogey. It's one more high cut to end the day, and just like we asked for on the first hole, it leaves us with a 7 iron. 5-2 stick. I think I'm hitting a 150 club left of it. Picking a conservative target and playing aggressively at it. And I'm still trying to follow my 10 commandments. Trunk bit. This one's a miss, and the final of what I would call my 16 bad shots of the day. But we'll go back to work with the gap wedge. This is a miss that I'll get away with. Yeah, that could have been way worse. And now it's time to line up one more putt. Kind of like to make this one. Yeah, I see what it's doing. Left edge. Don't give up the hole. I'm committed to the line, and I make it. Yeah. It allows me to card a differential of 7.5, which I'm more than happy with. That was awesome as always. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Yep. And in keeping with the theme I've been doing lately, I'll tabulate my best nine and worst nine, and notice that my best nine holes of the day were two under, and my worst were 11 over. It's a good reminder to keep on grinding, and always try to follow the Ten Commandments of High Handicap Golf.